The most popular form of entertainment in the 1930s was a radio. What were some of the most listened to radio programs? Who were the biggest radio celebrities of the day? Radio burst onto the scene in the 1920s and quickly became a national craze. No other new product caught on as quickly as radio. Everyone wanted to have one in their home. Two years after radios went on the market, radio sales were bringing in more than $60 million a year. Radios came in all shapes and sizes, too. The least expensive models could be purchased for about $8. A nice radio might cost about $50. The most expensive radios on the market were the size of a chest of drawers and cost more than $500. By the dawn of the 1930s, about half of the homes in the country had a radio. There were also more than 500 radio stations operating in the United States. Radio networks quickly developed programming to entertain their listeners. During the workday, when most listeners were housewives, romance and drama programs were featured. The Romance of Helen Trent, Stella Dallas, and Life Can Be Beautiful were all popular programs. These shows were usually sponsored by products that housewives needed, such as laundry detergent or dish soap. Thus, these programs became known as soap operas. The after-school hours were usually filled with action and adventure programs for kids. Flash Gordon, Pop Harrigan, Sky King, and Superman were amongst the most popular. These programs usually ran 15 minutes and kept children engaged while their mother prepared the evening meal. In the evening, everyone would gather around the radio and listen to programs the entire family might enjoy. The Lone Ranger and Amos and Andy were both popular evening programs. Shows such as The Shadow would hook listeners with popular catchphrases like who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The Shadow Knows! One of the most popular programs of the 1930s was hosted by Jack Benny. However, it was not known as the Jack Benny Show. As many programs of that era were, the show was named after the product that sponsored it. In this case, the show was known as the Jell-O Program. With the rapid growth of radio's popularity, companies had been quick to realize how effective it could be for promoting products, medicines, food, soft drinks, coffee, and even cars were all advertised on the radio. Stations also realized how effective radio could be as a source of news. Radio listeners of the era grew accustomed to the phrase we interrupt this broadcast, which was usually followed by a breaking news bulletin. As technologies improved, many stations even featured a live man on the scene who would report about events taking place. Probably the nation's best known voice on the radio in the 1930s was that of President Franklin Roosevelt. Throughout the decade, he offered periodic radio addresses known as Fireside Chats. These addresses were intended to assure the nation that, although times were tough, things would get better. 